This is MIA 2K Podcast, and we are your ticket from Miami to Seoul. We are your pilots, Kathy and Laura, two fun-seeking girls with obsessive fandom tendencies, taking you on a ride through the Hallyu wave from our perspective as opinionated, grown Latina fans from Miami. Before we close the cabin doors, make sure you're following us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And if you like to watch, our in-flight podcast video is available on YouTube and Spotify. Once we reach our cruising altitude, we'll be serving one thing and one thing only, piping hot tea. We're ready to fly into today's topic with our hot and sunny takes. So fasten your seatbelts, sit back, relax, and prepare for takeoff. Hi, guys. Hello. Today's episode is a super light and informative chit-chat on a topic we've been wanting to cover for a while. And we're really glad we waited until now to give you guys every possible angle and important bit there is to know about it. We're going to be talking in depth about cup sleeve events, what they are, how they came to be, what they're like in South Florida. And we'll also share a bit about our experience going to a cup sleeve in Daegu during our trip to South Korea a few months ago. We'll also show you our cup sleeve collection and, and by we, we it's mostly Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a really good episode to not just listen, but also watch either on Spotify or YouTube. Yes. The best part about this episode specifically is that it's not just us that you're getting today. We actually enlisted the help of two amazing Florida cup sleeve experts to help us share the ins and outs of the planning process in case you have been wanting to take the plunge and plan a cup sleeve yourself or just want to know the tea about what it's like behind the scenes. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to be chatting with them a little bit later, but first, cup sleeve time. <laughs> Laura, <laughs> Laura just told me before that, but she's like, you should wear your cup sleeves as bracelets. So here I am wearing it as bracelets. I believe she did this for a whole brunch hour or brunch, brunch period. <laughs> Cause she had just come from like a cup sleeve event. And I feel <laughs> like I saw her like, just put on her cup sleeve on her hand and just yeah because like sometimes fashion. it feels like it's the best way to keep it safe it is uh, it won't lose its shape once like it's there so yeah you know me and my attachment issues hoarding and all that stuff <laughs> it's great so I guess the first question is Kathy what is a cup sleeve I am so glad you asked Laura <laughs> so the first thing that we want to start with is making an important distinction, which is you'll probably hear the word cup sleeve used interchangeably about the event itself, as well as about the item that the event revolves around. What I mean by that is, as an example, you can hear someone saying, I'm going to the cup sleeve tomorrow at two, at what time will you be there? Referencing the event, right? But you can also hear something like, this is the cup leave design that we're going with. We hope you guys like it. So it's referring to the item, right? So the item itself is a sleeve that goes around a cup, much like the ones you see at a Starbucks. I also have a Starbucks drink that I saved from this weekend <laughs> just to show you guys because I didn't want you to imagine it because sometimes I don't, I'm not that great at explaining myself with words. So when you go to Starbucks and your drink is really hot, they give you a sleeve that is brown that has a Starbucks mermaid design logo on it. And it's meant to protect your fingers. And do you remember that movie Made of Honor with Patrick Dempsey? In the movie, he's like a millionaire or like has all this money and is a playboy in New York for absolutely no reason, except for the fact that allegedly he invented these sleeves and he gets paid 10 cents every time people use them. So, yeah, I don't think anyone in Generation Z knows what I'm talking about, but... If you want to go watch a vintage movie, I guess, or whatever, go watch Made of Honor and you can learn a fake fact about the sleeves. That's not who invented it, but whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so the Starbucks cup sleeves are the ones that people can recognize easily and it's still a cup sleeve. So the difference between the cup sleeve on the Starbucks cup versus the one on my wrist is that the one on Starbucks is used to shield fingers and hands from the heat of hot beverages inside the cup. While the cup sleeve that we're talking about, again, the one on my wrist, is a staple of the K-pop fan experience, and it's purely for decorative and collectible purposes. I hope the show and tell was helpful in illustrating the difference. Now, that's the cup sleeve item. The cup sleeve event has the purpose of bringing fans together in one place to celebrate an important milestone for a K-pop idol or a group, 
like a birthday, an anniversary, a concert tour stop, or the release of an album. They mostly happen on weekends, and the majority take place at boba tea places, cafes, bakeries, or tea shops, depending on where you are. If you're not into K-pop, you don't really think about cup sleeves as being like a thing. You get your Starbucks cup or you get your cup of coffee, tea, whatever from a shop, and you don't really think about the thing going around your cup. You just like accept it for what it is. So it's good to have all these information. So if anyone who's not into K-pop or a new k poppy listens they can kind of know what we're talking about right yeah and even if you are into k-pop a lot of people who are into k-pop aren't aware of these things and a lot of fans also we met one recently out of stray kids stray kids cup sleeve she has been a fan for a few years but didn't know that we had events in south florida she hadn't really found anyone hosting or seen accounts posting information about it so she showed up to the cup sleeve super excited it was her first ever and I was like, girl, I got you. <laughs> like we we got all the information, the 411, we got it for you. So and and like for me personally, all through 2021 of being a fan of K-pop that year, I knew nothing about cup sleeves. Cup sleeves didn't come into my life until 2022. Okay. So here's my story, my journey into cup sleeve <laughs> hoarding, lovingness. So I was on TikTok, as you do, and I came across this TikToker. I think his name is this is geo dude i will add his handle somewhere because he ruined my life so thank you geo for that so i was watching i was on tiktok i'm scrolling his tiktok comes up and he's like talking about the oh i'm gonna show you guys the cup sleeves that i collected today and i'm watching and i i see him like showing the thing and i'm like this guy left his house and drove god knows how many miles to go get a little piece of cardstock that has like printed faces of people that we love sure but like it's merch, like merch made right by fans. So like, what's the significance of it? And like, it just did not make sense to me at all. This was around January of last year, 2022. Then March rolls around and we meet these people uh, at an Eric Nam concert that now are our besties, JP and Alicia, shout out to you both. So that was March 7th of last year. We meet them, we like talk, we're, we're enjoying some food and some drinks together. And then JP mentions that he's going to the cup sleeve for sugar. And if you guys have been watching our podcast, you know that sugar is the reason I exist. So I was like, well, I don't care about cup sleeves, but I will show up for sugar because why not? So JP sent the link to the cup sleeve that was happening that week, which by the way, super rude. It was like the only cup sleeve ever that happened on like a Wednesday, but whatever. We went anyway, and like during (laughs) lunchtime. And I showed up by myself at first because JP came in later and it was like, it was a very small cafe and everybody there was like super to themselves and to like their own little tables. I showed up with like my best Min Yoongi, like you could spot me miles away from me. Like I was wearing <laughs> a bucket hat with rings on it. I was wearing a Suga 93 jacket. <laughs> like I did not come to play. I wore yellow sunglasses, like the one he had during tour. So again, You could spot me as a Yoongi bias three miles away with no problem. (laughs) So I walk in and like I see everybody on the tables and everybody just looks really quiet, totally not interested in like making friends. Again, it's also a Wednesday at noon, so it's not really like it's lit or anything. So JP finally shows up. We order the drinks. He showed up with a coworker that he was trying to like brainwash into loving K-pop as you do when you are a K-pop fan. And then we sat there for like 15 minutes and I left and I was kind of super like thrown off and then I I literally got home and I saw a tweet somewhere that was like uh you can really differentiate the cup sleeves that you go to by the member who it's for because Yoongi biases be hella antisocial and I was like oh my god someone is watching me live my life anyway <laughs> so that was my first cup sleeve actually the very first one that I went to I went on the wrong day because I was so 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 like new to cup sleeves that I didn't even read the thing right because I was so like excited to go so I showed up a day early and get pena when I walked into the freaking place <laughs> And I was like, uh, is the sugar cup sleeve here? And they're like, it's tomorrow. Again, me and my full Yungi regalia. Not it. <laughs> so anyway, it's been literally just over a year since I started going to cup sleeves. And now it's my entire personality. She's definitely MI2K's cup sleeve queen. I like- am period yeah. yeah but it's like there was there was no contest not because there wasn't competition like Laura did not want this title <laughs> she wasn't fighting me for it I have been to maybe a quarter an eighth 
of the cup sleeves that Kathy has gone, mainly because in South Florida, they're a bit far from where I live. Mm -hmm. But even the ones that are kind of close, I'm still like not going to them. Yeah. But but ap- apart from from just travel time or whatever, Saturdays and Sundays are really big like family days and rest not days. Errands. Errands. <laughs> a too, lot of yeah. errands. So that's kind of where my time goes on Saturdays and Sundays. Commitments and weddings and baby yeah. showers and things like yeah. Gross. <laughs> Very Just kidding, gross. love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Very gross. But yeah, so it, it's busy, especially when you are not 19. So yeah. yeah, it's it's I get it. For me, it's like cup sleeves are like a you can show up for 15 minutes or you can be yeah. there for an hour buying PCs or anything else. So it really like is not that out of the way for me no. um, in relation to how Laura lives really, really far from where the majority of them take place or much closer to me. So that's why I make the effort every single weekend. But I mean, even and it's probably not probably it's also just a personality thing because we have a friend who is married with twin girls. <laughs> Yes. And she still goes to more cup sleeves than I do. <laughs> yes. Yes. I definitely think it has to do with the obsessive gene and the hoarding gene. And just like, she's also like only a year into K-popping. So like, yeah. she's very excited. Very. But I think she's just an excited person for sure. Like it's personality, it's, like you said. Very cute. Sure. I think, no, I know. <laughs> you told me that K-pop cup sleeve events obviously started in South Korea. And they've like migrated over here. Yes, I I, li- I remember looking for this information because again, like Laura mentioned at the beginning, we've been thinking about doing this episode for a literal actual year. Like what actually, 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 <laughs> when when I started going to cup sleeves, Laura suggested, Kathy, why don't we do an episode on cup sleeves? And I said, ew, why would I do that? Because <laughs> I had only gone to like two and I was still in denial <laughs> about how this was about to become my like life mission. You actually also said, I don't think I'm going to be going to that many anyway. Yes, because exactly. It started during Sugar's birthday season and I thought I was just going to show up for Sugar. So what had happened was I went to the Sugar one. Then there was another one for Sugar and J-Hope. And then there was another one for Permission to Dance. And then I just started seeing more cafes (laughs) and things and like going to places that I had never seen like in my area. And then other groups that I also like started doing things like, you know, Stray Kids or whatever. So it was over for me. Like, I again, I was just in denial with like, as I am with most things in life. <laughs> so yeah, the, the episode has been in the making since Laura suggested it over a year ago, but it's finally here. Editing Kathy here. I got carried away and did not answer the question of the origin of the cup sleeve. So here I am while the footage of my first cup sleeve plays in the background. Yes, cup sleeve events originated in South Korea and once international fans saw the potential and figured out how to host them, it was over for all of us on a global scale. Now back to the episode. One thing that I like about cup sleeves, and this was something actually that our friend JP told us, Uh, that first day that we met him that like blew my mind but now after a year or so I understand the merch like it's your faves merch without Mm -hmm. you having to sell a kidney to get it yeah so even though it's not technically official it's still merch of your favorites and it is still a way to support them and support other like k-poppies yeah so when JP told us that people collect them, I was like, what? But now that like I understand and I see, it makes a lot of sense. And they they do have sometimes official merch at the cup sleeves. So you can That's find true. both. Like a lot of small shops have albums or magazines or a bucket hat or pickets for concerts or other merch that is actually official. So you you just need to look out for what, which vendors they have because you might find a little bit of both. But but let's be real, the fan made merch is always fucking cuter than the actual official merch. One hundred percent. And honestly, it's also a really really good place to buy photo cards mm-hmm. because they're usually from. I mean, it's usually the vendors who are selling it, right? Yeah. And these are people that go to events all the time, so mm-hmm. you know that they're not going to. It's going to affect them more to sell something fake. Yeah. Not. So yeah. and and usually prices are so much better than trying to find them online. And you so, don't have to pay for shipping. 
And and you can see them in person and make sure that they're not scratched because I've bought some before that like True. the pictures from eBay don't look scratched because the scratches are really hard to catch in the light. Mm -hmm. But you can make sure that what you're getting in person is really good. Yeah. So who puts on cup sleeves? Like what exactly makes a cup sleeve event a cup sleeve event? Sure. So we're actually going to get a little bit more into this when you see our segment later with our interview. We asked two amazing uh, cup sleeve organizers from South Florida to come sh like spill all the tea on the cup sleeve planning process. So stay tuned for their answers. But basically, basically like base level, anyone can plan a cup sleeve and all you need to like make it a cup sleeve is a physical cup sleeve. Like you just need to have a cup sleeve design and you I also mean, need a cafe to let you host. Right. Right. <laughs> it's it. it, it when you like hear about it or like you go to one you think oh it's like super complicated but it's mm -hmm. really just a very basic idea right yeah and it also depends on the city like i'm That's sure true. the cup sleeves on la are on crack because that's it's true. just like that's where the population is and i'm sure right. that it's like crazy i mean even for us like from orlando you haven't been to the ones in orlando but when i tell you girl it's a whole different experience like uh for here in south florida you basically just i've never seen a line other than a, a Borasu cafe when they have the right. BTS cup sleeves. Mm -hmm. That's the only time that there's been like lines everywhere else. There's never a line. There's never like a compulsory RSVP situation. Like mm -hmm. you, they give you the option to RSVP, but, but you don't have to, right. you can just walk in and you'll find stock. Like it's not really like an issue, but in Orlando, you have the RSVP form that you have to fill out because if not, you can be in line for 40 minutes up to an hour Right. waiting to get in and there's That's also crazy. like expedited fast pass like options on eventbrite which they're not charging for but they need you to like actually register for it in order to be able to get in you, there's like tiers and if like it's it really can vary from city to city south florida is not there yet thankfully i think yeah I, I still like the chillness real. of it of just like showing up and you know yeah. getting out but yeah so i'm laughing because there is a topic that kathy and i feel like a lot of people that like cup sleeves it's like a very like heated like a very spicy topic uh-huh <laughs> how do you get a cup sleeve do you pay for it does it come with a drink like what is how does it work i got the boba tea for you bestie okay <laughs> so, <laughs> so it depends is the general answer the majority of the cup sleeves that i've been to the way that they work is you show up to the boba tea shop or the cafe, you go to the counter, you order a drink of choice, whatever you want to have from the cafe, literally any drink is basically uh, guaranteed, quote unquote, a cup sleeve, right. depending on the host. So you get your your drink once they make it for you. And then you'll see that there's like a main table where the hosts are located and they have the cup sleeves on the table. So you go to that table and you get the, the cup sleeve from them. I, again, the majority of cup sleeves that I've been to in South Florida, the cup sleeve is included with the purchase of the drink. So you right. don't have to pay anything additionally for it. There's also a few places like with Borasu Cafe, which they host their own cup sleeves. No one hosts it that there for them. They are the own oh. host. Um, you get the cup sleeve at the cashier when you pay for the drink. So and that also happened a couple of weekends ago when we had the Zykers cup sleeve event mm. and tea licious they they also had them at the cashier so they give it to us one once we order the drink yeah so those are the two main places where you get the cup sleeve and the vast majority of the cup sleeve hosts make sure that the the cup sleeve is free and it's included with the purchase of the drink some cup sleeve hosts will say that the cup sleeve is actually not included with the purchase of the drink and you'll have to pay for it separately. I have, in my day, paid $2 for a cup sleeve one time. And another time I paid 5 And both times I was a little bit like raising my eyebrow. Because I feel like the best way to get people to drop money on the table is to not charge them for something that shouldn't be like a charge. Okay. Especially when the cup sleeves are, we'll get into the cup sleeve styles in a little bit. But there are some that are cheaper that you can tell that are cheaper than the other ones. Mm -hmm. So when they are so cheap, it's kind of like ridiculous that you're charging me $5 right. for a cup sleeve like 
a little flap that I know didn't cost you more than 50 cents to get made. Right. So that's why Laura was saying that it's like hotly contested when the cup sleeve is sold separately. And then there's other events where the cup sleeve is included, but not really because you have to like buy a tier. It's part of a tier package. So it includes other things with your purchase. But so you have to buy it, but it's free, but it's already included. But they don't tell you that it's like you're paying for it, but you're paying for it kind of thing. So in those cases, when it's part of a tier, mm -hmm. do you still have to buy the drink when you go or do you not need to buy a drink and you just get the cup sleeve? You don't have to buy the drink. Not at, not every time. Like mm. it depends really on the host because obviously they have an agreement with the cafe that they're going to bring a ton of foot traffic. Right, right. So obviously the point is for people to buy drinks. But it, the cafes are not really tracking like who walks in and goes straight to the table. So no, like you could, you could 100% just buy the tier and not buy the drink in most cases. I'm sure some will say no, but it's, I've never okay. seen that. So before the event, they usually release a flyer that has all the things that each of the tiers can include. Usually there's up to three tiers. And let's say the first tier could be like $5 or $8. And it could include the cup sleeve, a sticker, maybe a photo strip, a raffle ticket, uh, and like maybe washi tape, something like that. If there's a second tier, maybe that's like 15, that might include a keychain or a pin or something a little bit more like substantial. Not to say that the other things aren't substantial, but like it, it costs them a little bit more money to put that right. together. And then there could also be tiers up to like 25 or 50. You sent me one like not too yeah, long ago. Yeah. That was like 50 bucks for things that were not worth 50 bucks. Mm, so sure. yeah there's there's that i mean one of the like more interesting aspects to me is the design part of it like mm -hmm. i i haven't been to that many cup sleeve events but we do follow a lot of accounts that promote cup sleeve mm -hmm. events so we've gotcha, seen designs gotcha. like not just from south florida but like yeah. nationally yeah and there always seems to be this very formulaic way of mm -hmm. making a cup sleeve and it always look they all look very similar like to me I can tell when the event host went to like somebody that knows design yeah. compared to when they just kind of put Do it, it together <laughs> right right yeah. and like it's not that you can't make a good design on Canva or whatever it's yeah. just they don't have the eye for Design. design so they just kind of follow the same formula that everybody follows which is like take a picture of the idol or whatever and mm -hmm. then put it in the middle and then fill it with like a lot of cute things very mm -hmm. gen z lisa frank <laughs> kind of situation yeah yeah so it's it's very very interesting to me and that's why i remember jp saying that people collect them mm. because I remember after that seeing some of the designs that I was like, this was done in PowerPoint by a mm. three-year-old. Mm. Is that being a little mean? No offense, <laughs> three-year-olds. No, but it's it's the truth. Like, you know, half of the incentive if you're if you're collecting these is that they're gonna be pretty and that they're gonna be worth right. collecting. Right. So a lot of people like it and it's not a knock to anyone. It within us too, within yeah. my A2K, 50% of us is really good at design, and the other 50% is me so <laughs> <laughs> i can't design for shit like our entire beautiful instagram like account is designed by laura she's the one who has that forte that i i don't have the eye i can sometimes put something together that is not horrendous and laura praises me when i do and that's about it but it's, it's not something that i enjoy doing so i would never be like let me design a cup sleeve because I want to put, you know, sugar with a lot of cats on it. Like, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. I just, I would tell you the idea and let you, right. the designer, the expert, deal with it. So it's not that we're trying to be mean. We're just like, right. life is about self-awareness. And you need to right. be self-aware and know where your, like, stops are. Now, if you can't afford to pay someone or whatever, do you? But at the same time, sometimes when I see some of these very simplistic designs where it's just a colored background and the picture of the idol in the middle and then they're charging tears or money for the cup sleeve itself it just seems like they're trying to take advantage of a community that is very open and welcoming and supportive of 
pretty much everyone. Yeah. So it just feels like it's a little bit predatory in that sense. Like yeah. taking advantage of our love for a group or a person or whatever. To turn a profit. Right. And that's where it kind of bothers me a it lot. It bothers me a lot. I have one like just the exact same situation you're describing. I have one like that in my binder, but I never went to another cup sleep from that host ever again. And uh, I mean, when the cup sleeve design is good, mm. oh my God. When it hits, it hits. It's good. There's this one artist. I don't know if she's, I don't know if she's based in Mexico or if I she's based she in is. California, but her handle is Chimmy Graphic. And I think mm-hmm. that's her handle like everywhere. Everywhere. And her work is very her. Mm. Signature. And it, oh. Yeah. Like the I saw a cup sleeve that was happening in LA and then I saw the design and I was like, oh my God, this looks so cute. It looks like Chimmy designed it. And then I saw the thing and I was like in the corner, it's a design by Chimmy Graphic. Like it was extreme. It's extremely noticeable. Her her style is, Damn. Laura found her. I don't know how, like she, we've been following her for a year at this point from whenever Laura found her account. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with her, her like style in general. So when it hits, it hits. Well, it really does. So I think now it's the time to talk about the different types of cup sleeves because yes, yes. you've been Itching. mentioning it. Yeah. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. So there are a few different styles, types, girths. <laughs> it's a, it's a girthy thing uh, of is, cup sleeves. <laughs> so first we'll insert a picture of how I have my BTS cup sleeves organized. What I did was I just got all my tiny tans and then put the cup sleeves of each member on top of them. So it's like really organized chaos is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So those are my favorite cup sleeves basically, which are the ones that I got at Borosu Cafe. Those are the best cup sleeves by far. And I'm pretty sure the reason why they are so good is because they're made in Korea. Laura and I have been looking for an entire year, just like doing research yeah. for a, a cup sleeve producer in the States that makes that style of cup sleeve. And we haven't been able to find, find one. It's always been like from South Korea. And because shipping prices are crazy right now, well, we are assuming that that's why Borisu is no longer doing cup sleeves. They're doing uh, Lomo photo cards instead. So I'm really happy that I got into them last year and I was able to yeah. almost fill my collection. I'm just missing J-Hope, but like I have hope one day I'm going to find him. So anyway, this is the type of cup sleeve that I'm talking about. This is my favorite type of cup sleeve. Oh, so this good. is the girthiest, sturdiest, mm-hmm. nicest cup sleeve. And I really do think that they're from Korea because like Zyker's just debuted mm-hmm. and the Hello 82 people probably have the hookup. So I, I really do think that they are, um, that these are made in Korea. So this really nicely printed. Um, I like the design because it's kind of simple, but it's also uh, good. It's good. just good. Mm-hmm. It's well done. It's well executed. They didn't do too much. And they had a black version as well. And I picked the white one because since all of them are basically wearing black, it it, it helps stand out. Mm. Uh, that's why I picked the white one. So there's that version. So there's this other cup sleeve style that is very similar to the first one you can see where the folds at the top and the bottom are kind of similar to the first one it just has a different shape where it like tapers up towards the top of it so it's literally my second favorite style of cup sleeve and i got this one from zero whom we'll be interviewing later but in the bottom of the cup sleeve it actually says presented by at stray kids fans la and the artwork artwork is by at Capsule. So as Laura mentioned earlier, like you can tell when the artists oh, are involved. Nice. Yeah. They they usually put something on the cup sleeve to let people know that they were the ones who designed it. And it's a very nice cup sleeve as well. Very cute. So that's the second type of cup sleeve. There is another type of cup sleeve that is actually not a cup sleeve at all. It's an actual cup. <laughs> and if you're looking at the screen <laughs> this is the one that we got at the cup sleeve event that we went to in Daegu in South Korea for the boys cup sleeve which again not a cup sleeve it's a it's a full ass cup it's actually very thick as well very sturdy mm-hmm. and we can talk about our Daegu cup sleeve experience in a little bit but I'm just showing you the option and I have also gotten a cup here in the states it wasn't just in uh, Daegu This one also from the boys. There was an event hosted by Kay from TBZ SoFlo. And she linked up with a cup sleeve people in New York. 
and they mm-hmm. shipped her these cups. But it's funny how I have the two cups that I have are, are from, the, from boys. the boys. So those are it. And then the vast majority of cup sleeve events that we go to have this other st- uh, style of sleeves, which are more similar to like the Starbucks one in, in the sense of like the girthiness or whatever. And it's they're flat, so I don't have them displayed standing in 3D. I have them in a binder. For anyone who's not watching, you should be watching. I have them in a binder in plastic sleeves. And the way that they give them to you at the table, they are they lay flat and they have slats on one side mm. and a little, like, yeah, a puzzle, like, like a puzzle piece head, right. little thing that right, you right, right. tuck into the, into the slats on the side. So you could close it and put it on your cup. And I actually did have them like that until Laura gave me the idea or mentioned that she had her cup sleeves in uh, like a folder. And I was like, actually, that makes a lot of sense because I don't have space to just like showcase all of the cup sleeves that I get that are flat as like the 3D beautiful, perfect shapes that they're supposed to be. So mm-hmm. I have them showcase like this precisely because of that. These are some TXT ones that I've gathered in the past year. And I'm not going to go through the entire collection because that's enough. But the flat ones tend to be different shapes depending on where you get it made, yeah. depending on the manufacturer. But they're basically flat. They vary in size and style, but it's basically the same material overall. Right. I think for me, as a person that lives in a one-bedroom apartment with her husband, <laughs> right. as much as I like the thicker girthier ones yeah those are much harder to store because Mm. you need actual 3d space yep so that's one of the pros i guess of having the thinner flat ones flat ones because they're you can put them in a binder like kathy does or i or like a file folder like i do yeah so it's just they're easier to store though i do prefer the thicker girthier ones that you right. could wear as bracelets yeah i think the best way to explain it for whomever is not watching is like picture the genie from aladdin and those gold cuffs that he had on his wrist mm. it's 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 about that size if you put it yes. on your hand so that's kind of what they look like when they're in their full form so yeah that's why i was wearing them as bangles earlier as well so yes So yeah, yeah, basically I didn't show my entire collection because we'd be here all day, but I counted in a few different ways how many cup sleeves I've been to in the past year since March of last year. I think it's somewhere between 35 to 40. I don't think I've gone to more than 40, (laughs) which is crazy because that's like, if you think about it, the the year has 52 weeks, right? (laughs) So if I have 40, that means that in a year... I have almost been to a cup sleeve every single weekend, but, but the, the caveat is that now in South Florida, there's like three to four cup sleeves in one weekend. <laughs> That's true. And also I bought a lot of cup sleeves that I have, which I didn't count them for the count. So it's like, I'm not, I have more than that in cup sleeves, You're but me. yeah. Cause like I went to uh like an event, I think it was a TXC cup sleeve and they were selling their cup sleeves from previous events for like two dollars which there i understand why they're right, charging right. for the cup sleeve previous because yeah. it's like an optional thing there you're right. you're getting the one from today you can pay for the one from before so i bought a bunch of like nct and vts cup sleeves that i you know wanted to have because i like the design and so they're in my binder they're just not counted in the 35 to 40 like if i counted them individually i'm pretty sure i'd have probably over 50 that's so, crazy it is crazy also i guess to also differentiate or showcase our 4% <laughs> compatibility. <laughs> the cup sleeve or the actual cup that we got in Daegu, Kathy still has in the shape of a cup. <laughs> yes, I do. I definitely opened it <laughs> and flattened it out. And I did not remember that it used to be a cup. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I thought it was or what. Yeah. yeah, I just I don't remember. It wasn't until you pulled out the cup that I was like, oh, shit, that was an actual cup. You were showing it the other day on like a TikTok live and you were like, oh, this is the voice. And I was like, that was a cup. It's not a cup sleeve. That was an actual cup. And I was like, oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, because since we were traveling back from South Korea and we had only carry ons, Laura thought that the best way to store it would be by cutting it and laying it flat i just stuffed something inside it and called it a day but it it really preserved its shape pretty well so i'm 
I'm mm-hmm. very pleased with that. So I guess that's a good uh, segue to talk about our, our Dago experience with the cup sleeve. Oh, yeah. So I think, did we talk about this in our episode for South Korea? Okay, yeah. so we won't go into too much detail. And we also have a TikTok about it, which we'll link in the description below. But we'll talk about the overall vibe, I guess, of the of the Dago cup sleeve versus what we experience here in South Florida. So number one, we didn't know anyone in Daegu. So it's not like we could show up and be like, hey, bestie, like, and, you know, like start talking yeah. to people. But with that said, when we showed up to the cup sleeve place by mistake, because we were just walking down the street to go to a restaurant and we saw the big banner for the event or like just with the idols. And then Laura looked inside and she goes, I think this is a cup sleeve. And I was like, excuse me, I heard my name. I've been summoned. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> So we were outside of the event looking in through the glass doors like the creepers that we are. And these we two, literally, literally, though, literally like <laughs> old people looking through a window glass situation. And <laughs> Laura's dying. <laughs> it was so bad. Just imagine what like the other side. Was. Yeah, the inside, what their perspective was. So this one table with two girls sitting by the front they saw us looking in and could obviously tell we were not from South Korea, obviously. So they saw us, they started smiling at us and they kind of told us to come in and we were like, Oh my God, do we do it? Should we do it? Like, do we go in? And we're like, of course we have to go in. I'm the the cup sleeve person. Like this is, this is my dream. Mind you, I did want to go to a cup sleeve in South Korea when we were planning the trip, but I fully knew that number one, it would be really hard to find one that was convenient with our schedule. Number two, Laura would give me the bombastic side eye of my life. (laughs) if I told her that I wanted to like spend part of our precious time in, in, in South Korea going to a cup sleeve so I didn't even try <laughs> but, you know if we ever do go back I I I do it like well because it's different it's not the first time and right we, and, and everything that the way that you treated the trip last time was like <laughs> if this is the last time I go to South Korea I want to do everything that I want to do and the cup sleeve was not going to make the cut <laughs> so again we didn't like I, I thought about it but I didn't really look into it and then it, it fell on our laps which we are forever thankful for that oh it God. happened during in that way so we the girls are smiling at us telling us to come in we go in they are trying to speak English to us and it was so cute and they were like who do you like and I was like I was like okay uh, like is Choyo so I was like Kevin Choyo and because it was about the boys so I was telling them about who I like because I didn't really know like the rest of the the boys and then they were like, what other groups do you like? And I was like, BTS Choyo, Monster X Choyo, Stray Kids Choyo, everybody Choyo. So then Laura was looking at the menu, trying to figure out what she could have that wasn't caffeinated because she thought that they were going to give us a drink in the moment. But what we found, which is not that what happens in Miami at all, is that when we paid for the drink and the cashier handed us like our stuff, she handed us the cutest little plastic bag with like a glass jar with a drink inside. Uh, and by a glass jar, I mean like, like a juice, yeah, like a juice, yeah, a milk juice, jar, a juice, yeah, uh, that that has like those gold caps and stuff, and it's just it was really cute and like well made and everything, and it had stickers and um, like a postcard and yeah, photo strips and a bunch of other stuff. So yeah. we were mind blown by everything that it included because I think it cost like what seven thousand one or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it just it cost like what a normal drink would have cost. Right. And it included a bunch of things really, really pretty, really well. Right. Usually things that you see here as part of tears. It was just part of what they gave you with right. the cost of the drink. Right. The, the one thing that I'm just thinking about is do you think it was like that because it was COVID? Or do you think that is that happens a lot in cup sleeves in like South Korea. I think that's probably the structure because South Koreans are really good at planning and really structured with things. Okay. So I do think that there are some events that are hosted. I looked into it and there's there was someone who was talking on Reddit about the events in Seoul and like the people who host and whatever. So I do think some of them are again, like here, you know, Boras who hosts their own stuff, but then there's other cafes where people host outside. So I think that specific cafe, they host their events because they have a showcase of all the cups that they've used before. And, and they have like, they had a monster X wall with like all the things. So they had had a recent event. So clearly this cafe is like a K-pop cafe. What I did notice, I guess, looking back, that was very different is I didn't see a merch table or anything like that. 
all the tables were just occupied by fans who were with their little group group of friends, like two to three friends. Yeah, everybody kind true. of to themselves. There wasn't a lot of interacting or any merch buying or anything like that. So that would be the biggest difference that I noticed between what we experience here versus that. That makes sense because it was just so good. It was. It so was. Good. It was. That if was you so wanna, good. if you're gonna go to Deco, go to Blue Maze Cafe or look it up. And and the girls that told us to like come oh, in, yeah, the cute they friends. actually had like extra stuff, and they yeah. gave us extra stuff. They literally like, ran out of the store after we left to like yeah. give it to us. We almost cried on the spot. It was like the happiest moment of our lives. It was the cutest thing. It was cutest thing thing thank you besties come samnida we love you Sana hai. thank you so yeah so that was our experience <laughs> in, uh, with a cup sleeve and deco and the difference between that and south florida and central florida again the events in central florida are even more well organized and more intense because there's a lot more fans up there so in general if you're thinking of going to a cup sleeve or if you're on the fence because you think well you don't know anyone or whatever even I, I mean, I've gone to one cup sleeve without Kathy. Mm. I did have a friend. I, I did meet up with a friend, but it's still very much. I don't know if that sugar. You've cup gone sleeve. to two without me. I have. Yeah, you went to the oh. 80s one last year with Claire and then the Borasu one this time because That's I was in true. Orlando. That's true. I've been to two without go. Kathy. Look at the and growth. Look at me. <laughs> And people are just very nice. At least yeah. down here, people are very willing and open. I mean, you know, obviously people sit with their friends, but there are people there that are happy to yeah. chat with you and share biased stories or whatever. So yeah, it's it's a nice little time. Also, if you see me, because one time we got a DM about this, and I'm not saying the one time is like enough for me to make a statement, but I am making the statement anyway. One time we got a DM from someone who saw me uh, the, at a cup sleeve, but I, we've never met before. We had only talked through DMs and they were like, oh, I saw you, but I didn't come say hi to you because I was scared. Never be scared of me. I'm like the least scary person ever. Sometimes I do have resting bitch face, but that's not really like a reflection of my personality. And if someone comes up to me, I'll be the bubbliest, happiest fucking human alive. So if you ever see me in the South Florida or Orlando or Atlanta, because we Ooh. also went to the Stray Kids Cup Sleeve in Atlanta, girl, I'll go to any Cup Sleeve in any state ever, like I'll, any country. So if you see me, say hi. Or I mean, yeah, Laura, I guess you probably won't see Laura, but if you see but her if you do. or us, say hi. <laughs> yes. I got to show you guys a different side of myself. <laughs> <laughs> so aside from the design another thing as a planner because that's mm. what I do on my day to day one other thing that really interests me is like what's in it for everyone <laughs> like aside from you know community and whatever support there has to be something that's making all these cafes be like hell yeah do a freaking cup sleeve here every single weekend like I'm about this life right and like I mean, I guess the vendors too, and the people that actually do the cup sleeves themselves, yeah. like there has to be something, right? Yeah. It can't just be a money pick because then nobody would want to do them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll hear about this more from our conversation with Zero and Jackie, but just an overall kind of perspective for the host, they, there's a lot of planning logistics involved and a little bit of an investment depending on the quality of event that you want to host and the quality of cup sleeves that you want to put out. So definitely do your research because it can cost a lot of money. Zero mm -hmm. will get into more detail about that in a little bit. For the cafe though, it's a no brainer because they're getting a ton of foot traffic. So if let's say I've heard from Zero before that they've hosted events where they've had hundreds of cup sleeves printed out, right? And so they're expecting about that much like foot traffic and sometimes they run out of cup sleeves. Yeah. So imagine the amount of people that can come in during a weekend, especially when they do two day events or something, because right. those are also a thing that you can do multi-day cup sleeves too. That's true. I know we keep mentioning this cafe here in South Florida, but Borasu, when, when they did cup sleeves last year, they would 
usually do two days. Yeah. And they had a 250, that's 500 people. I don't think they see 500 people come in during a weekend, usually. I would have no idea of what the foot traffic is like on a regular weekend, but whatever it is, they can definitely like exponentially multiply it with a cup sleeve. Because they also serve food. They also sell merch. It depends on the cafe. That's true. That's true. But they have but more to offer. Still, like, it's just you're guaranteeing whatever Correct. amount of cup sleeves, pretty much. Correct. The cafe is people, guaranteeing, right. like, a, a good, good weekend. Right. right. Exactly. That that makes a lot of sense. I, I, would, I would definitely accept cup sleeves if I owned a cafe. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. The other cafe that we can name that is always, or has always been a part of my cup sleeve experience is Kung Fu Tea and Davy. Right. That's the first place that I showed up to that didn't have the cup sleeve that day, <laughs> so that's technically my first. And then that was the second because that's where I went to the Stray Kids Cup Sleeve where I met Jackie, which we'll mention later in our interview with them. But yeah, uh, Kung Fu Tea is the one that everyone kind of goes to. It's easy. They're used to it. They know the drill. They have a a pretty big space. They're one of the biggest cafes that we have down here. So mm. it's pretty comfortable for them to set up like different stations for people to watch TV, play games, mer uh, vendors to sell merch. So uh, Kung Fu Tea is another big fan favorite for the hosts. And, and they bank. I, yeah. When I went to the one cup sleeve. That the Changbin one? There. Yes. No, we went have to been two. to two. Yeah, oh, the, one, the one in May. I know. Look at two. Look at me. Growth honestly um <laughs> they had a line not out the door but a line to order yeah yeah they and did. even in the atlanta one the line to order was like lining <laughs> and i expected that because again it's atlanta and it's right. for a concert you know that there's two days of concerts right so that means that there's potentially forty thousand fans in town trying to go see the kids and it's one day of cup sleeves so but it was also a thursday yeah, it was it like was. it wasn't even a weekend. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, the the line was at the door, and we got there when it started. I I got there right. before it started, actually. Right. So. So they were guaranteeing a good Thursday, mm -hmm. which I don't think is. I well, I mean, I guess Thursdays are better, like a Tuesday, but still, sure. like it's not a weekend. No, they got themselves a really good Thursday. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and for vendors, obviously, it's a really good experience to have to be able to go to a cup sleeve because they get to show their products in person, they get to sell things right. in person. They don't have to deal with shipping and mm. or people being, you know, crazy online because they are. Right. So and, and people go to cup sleeves willing to spend money. So it's yeah. like the wallets are already a little loosey loose. So, yeah. Also, the last thing, because I, I just remember literally today when I was like looking at this, we had an almost cup sleeve planning moment. So. Laura and I have really never been interested in hosting a cup sleeve event. We've hosted other types of events and we're interested in hosting other types of events, but we know that the cup sleeve market is pretty much taken care of. This is not really our area of interest. So, but one time we were graciously invited to co-host an event and I, I accepted initially based on the fact that the experience would help me bring the perspective for a podcast episode. Like literally that's the reason why I said yes. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to stay committed because I ended up being out of the country for two months. So I wouldn't have been here for the cup sleeve. And Laura was always going to be out of the equation because she was about to move. So it was just not going to work out for either of us. So that's why we didn't do it. But in that like, slight timeline of us potentially helping co-host an event, we did find out quite a bit about the logistics behind the scenes. So like, for example, one thing that bothered me during the process was we found out that, so this was an event that was coordinated with like a, a wider account. So it was like a, a US based or maybe global account mm -hmm. that was supplying or supposed to supply all the cup sleeves and some other materials to host all around the country so that it could be like a consistent theme and stuff like that. So the cup sleeves originally were supposed to be covered by them. Then they didn't have the funds. So we had to pay for them, which was fine. It was like 50 bucks, I think for less than 100 cup sleeves for us to get them and whatever but that's not what I didn't like what I didn't like was that when we were talking about finding a vendor we were told that the vendor could only sell merch from that specific group that the cup sleeve was for 
So that alienates a lot of vendors. And in South Florida in particular, we don't have a very strong vendor market. So it's really hard to find vendors that are only willing to sell one thing because they also want to just put all their stuff on the table right. to be able to maximize their potential profit. And just putting one group out kind of limits them, kind of not completely limits them. So right. that was the one thing that I found out when it comes to like orchestrated cup sleeves that go wider than just you there's restrictions and things that you're not as free to do so anyway we ended up not being able to participate because of logistics and things in our personal lives but yeah that was a interesting tidbit that I wanted to share about our almost planning experience that never happened so with that I think it's time to bring in our friends mm -hmm. Zero and Jackie who have even more tea than we just shared with you because this was just a rant from an unhinged, yeah. excited person and her friend who is just here for the ride. But Zero and Jackie have way more insights and it was amazing to talk to them. So we hope that you guys enjoy this part of the conversation. Yay! So here we are with two amazing South Florida stars <laughs> who we're going to have introduce themselves right now so that everyone can get to know them. And we can talk a little bit more in depth about the world of cuff sleeves because they're absolute experts. So we're going to <laughs> find out all the tea from the horse's mouth itself, even though that's a horrible expression, but whatever. Here they are. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> guys, please go, go ahead. I think that was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, yeah, that was pretty good. So most of you guys know, hi, I am Zero. I help run Stray Kids in Florida, and I've been doing events for quite a long time, almost about two years now. But mostly we've been focusing on Stray Kids events right now, but I've done ATs, I've done BTS events, I've done a whole bunch of stuff. And Jackie has been working with me on some South Florida things. So I'm so excited to be working with you forever. <laughs> I hope I hope it continues. I really, really do hope it continues it will. It for will. a long You're time. <laughs> You're one of my favorite co-hosts. Don't tell the oh, others. Stop. You're going to make me blush. <laughs> this is so cute. This is the best start ever. <laughs> You're going to make me blush. Well, hi, guys. Uh, some of you may or may not know me. My name is Jacqueline, or I go by Jackie. I've been doing events for about a year now, but I've, I've been into K-pop since like 2018. I started my first event, my first Stray Kids Cup Sleeve event last year for their anniversary, and Ever since then, I've partnered up with uh, SKZ in Florida to hopefully continue bringing you guys more Stray Kids events down here in South Florida. So Absolutely. Now, a lot of people <laughs> don't know, but Jackie kind of helped push me to continue doing events. And that's kind of started with the Benny's birthday bash. What was it, March or something like that? Around what that. Was it? Yeah, around that time. But Jackie was like, let's do a Chongbin Cup Sleeve event. And I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> she's like yeah absolutely so ever since then we've been on a roll mm -hmm. you guys have you really have so I can say from my experience so Jackie's first cup sleeve which was a Stray Kids anniversary event in March mm -hmm. of last year mm -hmm. was like my second ever cup sleeve and I showed up and I was so shy and I went up to the table and she was so cute and sweet like <laughs> you know kind of telling me what it was about because at the time again I was very new to mm -hmm. cup sleeves and then I ended up winning the raffle that they were doing that day. So then we oh. got to meet up again the next day so I could go pick up the album. And then we talked a little bit more. We found out that we both were really into DPR. We were going to see them in concert. So yeah. that's where like all those conversations spiraled. And actually, I saw Zero at that event, but I was mm -hmm. too shy to go say hi. So I didn't. So like that's also <laughs> a, a rule of thumb for like people to know at cup sleeve <laughs> events. These are meant for you to say hi to people and vendors yeah, love absolutely. nothing more when they're vending because zero was vending at that one. Mm -hmm. So when when they're vending, they want you to come up to their table and say hi and look at their merch and buy some stuff. So don't be shy. That's another like really good tip for everybody to know. It is. So yeah. And then I mean, from that one, from that event in March, because like you said, zero, Jackie told me that, you know, you were planning on doing the Changbin event from the Stray Kids one like there, you were already <laughs> I on the prize gonna host that event in August of last year so you guys were planning very far in advance mm -hmm. yeah and and we're ready yeah. to make my dreams come true as a Changbin stand so <laughs> yeah, that's like five whole months before lots I, of prep that's that's a lot of time it really does take a while especially if you want a solid month of promotion mm -hmm. it you, and then you need another month to manufacture items so you're already two months out at that point you guys are right on schedule with us and our, our timeline of questions here. So we do have like a little yeah. bit of a Q&A <laughs> section coming where Jackie and Zero are going to be able to answer what we hope are most of the questions that 
people have in general about cup sleeve events. So we've already covered the basics in our introductory section about what cup sleeves are and types and all that stuff. But now they're going to give us the real tea from a perspective as vendors, a perspective of hosts, and even attendees because they themselves also go to cup sleeves for fun as attendees all the time. I run into Jackie all the time with, you know, the cup sleeve mm -hmm. circle in South Florida. So I think it makes sense to start with this. So is there a number of elements that is required to call a cup sleeve event a cup sleeve event aside from a cup sleeve itself mm -hmm. like aside from the physical thing is there a number of things that you guys are like okay this has to be a part of it for it to be a cup sleeve a proper cup sleeve event um well honestly if you make the cup sleeve and you're at a boba cafe and you're having an event it's a cup <laughs> sleeve event that's it yeah that's <laughs> there it. You go. I like it that. doesn't even have to be a boba cafe it can be an ice cream shop it can be a coffee shop mm -hmm. anywhere if you can put a, a sleeve on a cup it's a cup sleeve event <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> love that we love to keep it simple stupid and i love the straight shooter life so i mean zero you said you've been doing events for about two years i'm not sure if both of those mm -hmm. years have been as you know vending or also with the planning so what made you want to host a cup sleeve event in the first place? That's a good question. <laughs> well, specifically with Stray Kids, we noticed that there was about one Stray Kids event per year. And I'm like, man, this is one of my favorite groups. <laughs> Why aren't there more Stray Kids events? So we noticed the lack in the market. There was a significant gap. So when we started providing these events, people showed up in masses. And then people were like, hey, why don't we do one here? Why aren't you guys over here? And I'm like, we can make that happen. So it was more of the love for Stray Kids and the state community as a whole in Florida. And definitely as soon as we started doing them, the community's gotten so strong. We posted a TikTok not too long ago about Chan calling out Florida at the yeah. ATL Day 2 show. Yes, that we were there. We up. saw it. We witnessed it in person. Yeah, yeah and Florida. that just truly solidified how strong the state community is here in Florida. And there's so many of us. Absolutely. And we, I forgot to mention yeah. at the beginning, Zero, you're based out of Orlando, right? I am now. Yeah. Originally right. I was from South Florida. Right. Jackie is down here. So we have basically <laughs> like South and Central Florida covered in this right. conversation. Yep. And Jackie, for you, was it kind of the same thing that you decided to host the, the Straight Kids event last year? A hundred percent. So for me, I have been to like multiple cup sleeves before hosting my very first cup sleeve, but it was mostly like, you know, BTS and like very, very few girl groups that I've been seeing, but I'd never necessarily seen one for straight kids. So I was kind of like brainstorming in my head. I was like, should I do a cup sleeve specifically for straight kids here in South Florida, considering I've never really seen one happen. And then from there, the anniversary one kind of blossomed yeah. per se. Yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> and Jackie is I an extremely talented host. So we had yeah, to work together. <laughs> I can totally certify and confirm that 100%. Thank absolutely. you. <laughs> it's crazy to me that it took basically four years in you guys for us to see yeah. Stray Kids cup sleeves here in Florida. Like Stray Kids has been pretty big for a while. Like, you know, a while. A while. Yeah. So yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, other states were seeing here. them more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they came here once for like district uh, in Miami. Right. In Miami. And yeah. I think there might have been one event there, but since then it's been pretty, pretty low. Yeah. There was mm -hmm. another host. Uh, her name was Amy. She did the first Stray Kids event that I went to in mm -hmm. Florida. And that was a couple of years ago by now. But ever since then, I'm like, wow, there hasn't been an event since then from anybody. Mm -hmm. So there's a total gap in the market. And we just really want to help out. It's, it's for yeah. my fans love you know yeah and it's so fun so with that Laura is more of the logistics queen in the group like when, when it comes to all these things so I think <laughs> she has a couple questions here that also fit right with what Zira was talking about earlier yeah so my first question is okay so you guys decided we don't see enough stray kids uh, cup sleeves we want to have some more how did you even start? Did you have someone that helped you that already did cup sleeves or did you just kind of figured it out as you went? <laughs> For me, I kind of just figured it out. I didn't necessarily have like much help to begin with considering it was like my first ever cup sleeve. So I didn't necessarily know who to reach out to per se. I did have a few help from my sister, like, you know, into making the designs for the cup sleeve and whatnot. But everything else, I kind of had to research it on my own and like, as finding the place, finding the place, I sort of had an idea only because I've seen that specific place do cup sleeves 
multiple times beforehand so it was easy for me to reach out to them but as far as like making the cup sleeve figuring out where to send the design to so that I can have the cup sleeve printed out and everything like that it was definitely trial and error for me but we all have to start somewhere so absolutely and I I saw no error I went to that event myself and I saw absolutely no error like you had the (laughs) cup sleeves you you had the raffles you had the vendors you had Mm -hmm. you know a a good established cafe that was willing to work with you so I I really don't think there was anything there to be like improved upon or anything I I had a really good time thank you I was definitely very very nervous I was really nervous because in my head I was you know all of these minds were going through as if is it going to come out good is it going to be a really good outcome is it like you know but it was definitely the outcome was very very overwhelming for me especially Mm -hmm. since there were a lot of people that came that I didn't expect were going to come and I've even had I'm pretty sure it was two people at that event that set up it was their first ever straight kids cup season that they've been to in South Florida so like to kind of hear that to kind of (laughs) hear that it it made my heart flutter so much because I was like they were praising it so much they were like oh my god I really hope to continue doing more cup season events in the near future and and I'm that sorry, basically was... solidified you as the stray kids like <laughs> person in South Florida yeah. 100%. absolutely absolutely I definitely gotta agree with Jackie it's a lot of trial and error yeah. when we started stray kids in Florida I did have some help um we originally had a couple of other like co-founders on the team but you know we all kind of went our own ways personal reasons it was it's really hard to work as a team it mm-hmm. really yeah. really is and we're still facing those challenges to this day but Right now, we've established such a great, like, volunteer community and, like, host group, and everybody works so well, and I'm really proud of the whole team, honestly. How many but... are you? <laughs> we have 82 people in our Discord chat, so Jesus. that includes, like, the 12 <laughs> hosts and wow. quite a lot of volunteers, but they're all spread out all over the state of Florida, so That was going to be the next question, like, which which them. cities can people look out for Stray Kids events at, Ooh. because, uh, like, now that we just ended with the March anniversary events, that there were mm-hmm. quite a bit, there's a, yeah. there's a really good stay HQ all around South Florida. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, uh, Jacksonville is really popping off. They're planning a lot of Stray Kids things, a lot of non-Stray Kids things. I'm really proud of them. They're small but mighty. Uh, South Florida is pretty consistent. So, of course, we'll be in South Florida. Hopefully Miami soon, possibly. We don't have anybody yet for Tallahassee, but it has been pretty requested. So okay. that's a possibility. Uh, Gainesville, we collaborated with K-Pop Bop Night to host okay. a Stray Kids anniversary um, night. We're going to be collaborating again soon, so look out for that. We have Merritt Island, you know, on the Space Coast. Uh, they just popped up out of nowhere, and I'm like, we are so ready to have you on. Let's do it. <laughs> They're about an hour that way. Okay, okay. From from Orlando, at least. Right. Of course, we have Tampa. Tampa is a power horse. Like, mm-hmm. when we had our first event there, everyone showed up. I'm like, man, this cafe is only this big. <laughs> So Tampa, we're absolutely going to continue doing stuff there too. Quick question to hopefully help if in any way if we can, but if there are any Tallahassee stay that would volunteer to host an event or something, how can they reach out to you, Zero, to mm-hmm. maybe link up and be part of your amazing Discord that is popping off? <laughs> well, we would love a DM on Instagram, but we check our emails pretty regularly. So either either two work well. It would be preferred if they had any kind of hosting or managerial experience. Of course. But most of that can be learned so it's not such a big deal awesome so we'll be we'll be including your handle uh, obviously in our description wherever you're listening mm-hmm. or watching this episode and yeah so reach out to zero directly and and you can get something popping in Tallahassee or maybe somewhere yeah, else possibly I, I I see you guys going global honestly so <laughs> take over kids all, everywhere all around the world thank you literally thank you. <laughs> so with that you guys mentioned that you started planning the Changbin uh, cup sleeve basically five months before the actual event. I wouldn't say it was five, but it was at least three well, or talking four. about it, talking right, about it, right. kind of ideating, yeah. So yeah. how 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 long? How, like how much before do you usually start like legit planning and like all maybe mm-hmm. not all hands on deck, but really start putting like a timeline together? Um, if I'm coordinating with the other hosts from multiple locations, it's gonna be at least three months that is if I'm not just overwhelmed with all the other work I have to do <laughs> two months minimum absolute okay. minimum mm-hmm. you okay. really can't do anything 
just a month out. It's too okay. quick. So I would say three months is the average. And for, let's say there's someone new who has a very small account, maybe something like what Jackie was trying to do last year for your first one. Like what is like a base level minimum investment that you have to make out of pocket before like, cause I mean, people go to the store, they buy the, the tea and then they get the cup sleeve, but if they don't mm -hmm. have a tier or anything, it's really, there's nothing coming to you in terms of money in that, in that moment. So how much do you have to invest to just get the cup sleeve printed if nothing else really comes out? But I know that you guys do like photo strips, stickers, Lomo yeah. PCs, like raffles, all the things. So, so what's the investment yeah. there? Depends how many you're ordering, really. If yeah. you're just doing a hundred cup sleeves, it might run you a hundred dollars in one website or manufacturer. But if you're doing a hundred cup sleeves somewhere else, it might run you fifty dollars. It really depends on okay. your shipping costs. If you're getting them shipped from an overseas supplier, mm -hmm. it's gonna run you a couple hundred dollars. Okay. okay. And unless you're doing a larger scale event, which is easily a grand, like no wow. questions asked. Wow. So like the more things obviously you include, if you buy an album to raffle off, or if you have mm -hmm. the photo strips printed and the little baggies where you guys put everything so cutely yeah. together, yeah. like buttons, stickers, all those things, it does take a, a, a significant investment from your side if you're going to yeah. do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and even decorations, like I've oh, yeah. seen and I've been and yeah. the way you guys decorated that Changbin one was like was so fun it was I really it. really pretty like it was it wasn't just like two pi pictures on the wall it was no. like a whole right. experience there was a vibe exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. I dragged my friend from, from Chicago she was in in town that weekend for a bridal <laughs> shower and mm -hmm. we I, we left the bridal shower and I went to take her to the airport and I was like but first we're gonna pass by this cup sleeve because this is my <laughs> that was husband. funny that was so, so funny <laughs> I saw that. She really enjoyed that herself. Was she was like, oh my God, I'm glad to like see what you're into in like a little chunk of your world. And I'm like feeling like aerial part of your world. So, That's so sweet. Yeah, yeah. She really enjoyed that one. So I was really proud that that was like the first one that I that I dragged her to. Aww. But she didn't feel dragged. So that's really what matters. <laughs> so you also mentioned a little bit about the conversations with the cafes or whatever kind of store that you work with. So how do you go about approaching them? And do they re also require for you to have any experience with hosting events? Or are they pretty open to like, if you want to host, they'll say yes? You have to reach out to a lot of cafes. You can't necessarily expect for one cafe to just be like, oh, okay, you're good with hosting here. From my experience or from when I hosted my first cup sleeve, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I contacted about six or seven cafes that were like uh, near my area mm -hmm. until yeah. I was actually able to find uh, Kung Fu Tea and Davey that were willing to, you know, give me a chance as hosting for the first time and being like, okay, you can host here. There are a few cafes that they kind of, they don't necessarily require you to have experience in hosting cup sleeves, but they kind of, they, they, would, they would prefer it just yeah, to see mm -hmm. necessarily what they're getting themselves into. Other cafes, honestly, some cafes, they don't even know what a cup sleeve event is. Like a <laughs> yeah, few cafes, that's I've, so true. <laughs> I've, had to, I've had to explain to them what a cup sleeve event is and like what the benefit of, you know, hosting one at their specific cafe is. So I was, that, that mm -hmm. was definitely interesting, but just- <laughs> There's a lot of rejection too. There is a lot of rejection. Yeah. I've had- You gotta get a, comfortable with that. I've had quite my fair share of rejection, so- like I said, you know, to those who are wanting to do like a cup sleeve event for the first time, reach out to as many places as you can. So and also it's percent. probably then I because of that. what you're saying, like a good idea to have like a pre-written thing of like, this is what a cup sleeve event is. In case yes. I ask, you don't necessarily have to send it on the yeah. first email, but have something prepared if they ask like, hey, we don't know what you're talking about or whatever. Mm -hmm. Kind of have some numbers or some research before mm -hmm. you approach them so that you can give them like co uh, cold hard information yeah the last thing like another tip also that's a good reason also why when zero was saying at least two months for it to be good i'm sure that also mm -hmm. the long like longer in advance you reach out the more likely is that they can say yes because it, they won't be booked for another event so yep. planning ahead yeah. of time is critical mm -hmm. you also need to account for the travel time you can't just call a place and be like hey we want to host here this is what a cup sleeve is you also have to go there. You have to check mm -hmm. out the layout. You have to figure out where am I going to be putting these tables? What kind of decorations are going where? Uh, is there parking? Is it paid parking? How many guests are we expecting? How many cars are we expecting at certain times of the day? Like, mm -hmm. where's the line going to go if there's a line outside? You have to visit the location physically yes. to get a really good sense of what's actually going to happen. So do you first... Plan. 
reach out like through email, through phone, or do you just try to go first in person just to, so they can see like a face? Um, I usually call them first and okay. especially if they've already done a cup sleeve event and I kind of feel like, Hey, we want to do one too. This is who we are. And then I set up an in-person meeting with them if I can. Okay. Like I've driven out to Tampa to go look at cafes. <laughs> That's yeah. Event. So it's yeah. either or. It's definitely an either or. You can do either or of them first. That's okay. So going back to the investment question a little bit, we've seen a few different types of events. So we've seen mm-hmm. most of the ones that I've seen you guys host. You know, if you go and you buy your drink, the cup sleeve is included. And then if you want more mm-hmm. things, then there are tiers, which you can either yeah. sign up for in advance, or you can just get them at the store when you go. So, yeah. but we've also seen some events where it doesn't matter if you bought the drink, you still have to pay for just the cup sleeve. And sometimes I've seen other events where even if you pay, like, let's say I buy two drinks mm-hmm. and then I go to the thing and I'm like, Hey, so this one drink can account for a cup sleeve. And then if I buy a tier, can I get a second one? And then they might be like, actually, no, you have to pay for that one or something like that. So what's you guys' take on or your policy on why you do the cup sleeve for free, which, by the way, is our preferred thing, because we we drop money at all the tables, including the the vendor table all the time. Mm -hmm. So it just feels feels Mm -hmm. a little excessive to charge on top of the charge on top of the charge. Mm -hmm. So why do you guys decide to do it the way that you do, which we thank you for? I personally add in the cost of the cup sleeves to the tier item packages. And eventually it pays for itself. But if we're taking a loss for the cup sleeves, it's not going to be that much. So I'm not really that worried about it. People come to the cup sleeves for a good time. And if they walked away without a cup sleeve, it wouldn't really be a cup sleeve event, you know? Right. But I take care of that through the tier items. And if everybody doesn't get a tier item, it doesn't matter. It's going to be covered maybe with the raffle ticket or somewhere else. The cup sleeve is usually one of our lower expenses. So I'm not too worried about it. And if you want an extra cup sleeve, here, take three. We're going to have extras anyway. (laughs) Love that. I always order more sleeves than I actually need. So if you want extra, don't worry about it. Yeah, I hope I wish more more hosts were like that because I have Mm -hmm. gone to cup sleeve events and where there's been like, oh, we don't really have that many left or we we need to you know I'm like I literally bought three drinks like what I I people couldn't come so they asked me to buy for them so there are those situations where it is frustrating yeah when hosts don't accommodate I have a few words on that I personally think if the rule is set ahead of time and posted about ahead of time it can be enforced because people know what to expect when they're coming Mm. in so if they're saying hey this is a strict one sleeve per drink order or one sleeve per receipt I get that. That makes sense. Especially if you have Mm -hmm. uh, fewer sleeves and you're expecting a lower turnout, that makes total sense. The host is doing what they need to do to Mm -hmm. make as many people happy as possible. So it's definitely not a down on them. You know, that they're doing the right thing for what they have going on. As long as they say it from the very beginning. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. That makes sense. Exactly. That's where the difference is. So yeah, no, I definitely agree with Zero on what they're saying when it comes to cup sleeves. I personally don't, you know, like at the end of the day, it's like whatever the host, you know, decides on doing, that's fine on them. But I personally don't necessarily like when they charge for cup sleeves because like Zero said, the cost of the cup sleeve is going into the tier itself already. So like it's somewhat being covered per se. And you also kind of have to take into account that it depends what group you're hosting for. If you know that you're hosting for like a really, really big group, say BTS, straight kids, you know, so-and-so, it's better to order a few extra cup sleeves so that, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of had those extra cup sleeves like in hand, just in case. Yeah. But if somebody comes up and they ask me, hey, can I get like a few more cup sleeves? Be my guess. Because yeah. I personally would love for everybody to walk out with the cup sleeve instead of, you know, having them to pay for you know for a singular one so yeah. that, that's my that's my personal take on it I 100 percent agree and also I've seen my favorite thing that I've seen like as a practice that I've seen people adopt is I've gone to let's say if I went to a cup sleeve on Sunday when I went to the table they have if they had leftover cup sleeves from another event they make it yeah. available for purchase after the day. yeah so it's exactly. not a dead like it's not a loss you're not mm-hmm. losing money on it you can always if you're smart about it make your money back later at a different event so 
yeah another tip and i've seen other hosts say if they ran out at that particular event they'll give them an old sleeve hey pick from Mm -hmm. this assortment of old sleeves i think that's a great that's a great idea that is a really good idea totally it it really makes uh people that are going kind of more incentivized to continue going to events that like yeah you guys host or, or, or events that are hosted that way because it's more like it creates in in my opinion like a friendlier atmosphere and mm-hmm. not so like cutthroat <laughs> so like strict like a very serious yeah like, yeah like, yeah we definitely and, and, don't want to appear that way no, no it, it makes it makes my my pockets more free like <laughs> when I'm going through the tables I'm like oh okay like let me look and and like buy stuff so at least from a cup sleeve newbie. Oh, that's true. Baby. I spend way too much money at cup sleeve events. It is bad for my wallet. Same. Me too. Me too. Same. It's a must. It's a must. It really is. At least one item. Especially yeah. with all the talented vendors. Oh my gosh. I know. Like, and that's the thing about South Florida, though, because it's booming and now there's like three to four cup sleeves every weekend. <laughs> it's <laughs> like girl like me to me to my bank account girl <laughs> chill <laughs> or my bank account to me i don't even know it's a lot because then people are bringing like you said zero so much cute merch so yeah. much cute fan made merch pcs for trading for selling for buying for all the yes. things so uh, how do you even like sustain that little yeah. lifestyle that we're getting into <laughs> in south florida right now <laughs> it's hard it's hard <laughs> oh my gosh every time i go to an event just as a guest i'm like i'm only gonna buy one thing <laughs> But then you end up leaving with like never everything. Yeah. a box, a yeah. whole a whole basket. But you feel so happy. So, like my friend, sorry, it's like it's just this past weekend. I went with a friend and I was like, Do I buy this? Do I not buy this? And then I bought it. And then she goes, You see that <laughs> smile on your face? That's mm-hmm. what that's what makes it. And I'm like, Yeah, who needs therapy when there's cup sleeve events? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I mean, cup sleeve events and boba tea. Therapy? <laughs> yeah, but that's, exactly. that's all you need for therapy. Exactly. You want, you want a date to yourself? Go to a cup sleeve event you're gonna have yes. so much fun absolutely so much fun. even people that just randomly stumble upon the events they're like oh my gosh this was great thank you for like mm-hmm. telling us about it and then they're like oh i want this thing i'm like oh do you know k-pop they're like no but it's no. cute <laughs> i'm like okay that's a that's a yeah. cool a random side note that how yeah. how many times does that actually happen like do you have a lot of people that maybe don't know anything about k-pop and then maybe discover it through a cup sleeve event because they were gonna go get boba yeah. that day and then they a get sucked lot. into the vortex absolutely <laughs> that's every so cool. single event and we're like you see them walk in and they're like what is going on <laughs> yeah they have this very confused and shocked look face. to their face mm-hmm. that like they even come up to us hosts and be like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> what, what is all of this for? So a lot of, it's fun. It's entertaining. That's for sure. It is. <laughs> it is. Kathy has taken a lot of people. I have. That don't <laughs> expect the cup sleeve to be what it is. And yeah. they always come out with the same like thought and feeling like, oh my God, wow, that was like organized. I wasn't expecting that many people, yeah. that many like things to be for sale. Like they're always pretty impressed. Yeah. yeah Last year, I actually, it's where I met Zero in person for the first time, even though we had been talking and was at the BTS cup sleeve in Orlando at mm-hmm. Blended. So yeah. I was at a bachelorette in Orlando, so I couldn't make <laughs> any of the events down here in South Florida. And I fully kidnapped the bride and two other people in my car and I took them to the event. <laughs> And everybody was like, what in the hell is happening? And I'm sure the bride was not happy with me. But then like two days later, Festa dinner happened. So mm-hmm. all the articles about BTS's hiatus came out and she texted me and she yeah. goes, oh, it's a good thing that we went. Like, I'm glad that you got your little moment before they split. And I'm like, first of all, they're not splitting. But also, if that makes you not be mad. OK, sure. Thank you. Anyway, when you told me you were there with them, I was like, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, I wanted to come. And I was like, you're insane. I am. <laughs> I <really> am. <laughs> it was funny. It's funny. It was funny. Speaking about vendors, how do you guys approach people? Do they approach you? Like, how does that how does that work? Usually, yeah. A lot of they them approach them. Most of them. I actually met Zero at last year at my Cupsley event last year. Because they had actually mm-hmm. DM'd me asking if they were able to, you know, come vend at my event, which First thing, it took me by surprise because I've been following their shop for a while. So <laughs> I was, I'm pretty sure I was eating Korean barbecue with a few of my friends. <laughs> oh. So when Zero DM'd me, I, I literally screamed. 
Like, honestly, <laughs> no. I, just, for you, I did. I did. I just found out like, there's no way that they just contacted me asking if they were able to come to my event. <laughs> and then <laughs> it, it, was a it was a shocker for me. It really, really Stop. was. But usually, you're making me blush. Do... <laughs> oh. Yours are so cute. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but usually what we do is yes there are some vendors that they do contact us uh personally through dms ask them if they're able to vend mm-hmm. but another thing that we do which makes their lives a lot easier is that we actually create a vendor form through google forms where when we do make that announcement that we are looking for vendors we prefer them to head over to the google forum and you know fill out some questions that we have for them that way they go on review and we see you know even though it's really, really hard to pick out vendors, especially oh, there's so That's the worst such part. A huge, it, it, it's the worst Ooh. part. It is the worst part. Like, honestly. It is the worst part. Oh, man. But, I never thought that that was going to be like an issue at all. It mm-hmm. is. Especially well, at the last event. Oh, my God. Yeah, we had like a record high number of applicants. I'm like, I can only take six to eight of you. I got 20 people on the list. Ooh, ooh. It's yeah. so bad. So it's really it's really really hard to choose but me personally when I'm doing events I kind of like to choose new people or choose new mm-hmm. vendors for every single event so that way I can kind of give them a chance to you know showcase their art and you know give them more of a bigger audience per se or like have more yeah. people know about their shop yeah that's lovely <laughs> yeah he said it perfectly yeah I hadn't I hadn't thought of that that you you actually do have to say no to somebody like yeah. I it, it never even occurred to me mm-hmm. right because the shop has a limited space 100 yeah. percent. so Oof. and it really sucks it really does because especially when they're either a new vendor or a really yeah. loyal vendor I'm like heartbreaking <laughs> it is it is yeah, it doesn't sound fun at all. Time, does time, not sound time fun to at all. start doing it's multi-day cool. events so you can say yes to them for Coming different up. days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, wait, was that was that like an exclusive? I don't know. Maybe. Oh. Spoiler alert. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> sport, 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 just say, oh. But that's also why we like to do multiple different locations because they're usually yeah. on different days. And a lot of our vendors travel from different parts in the state to get here up to like two Thank hours you. away. And I'm like, girl, we're going, we're coming to Tampa next week. I'm going to put you in the Tampa group and not the Orlando <laughs> group. We're, fu- we got you, you know? Awesome. And they're like, amazing. I love I mean, having different vendors in different locations. Yes. Zero, the call is coming from inside the house. You keep traveling up and down Florida to go <laughs> <Yeah>. to events. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I have a lot of miles on my car. You do. I'm <laughs> sure. Do. You do. I've even done events in Atlanta, man. The drive is crazy. Oh, you drove there? Yeah, every time I go up to Atlanta, I drive. <laughs> you just blew my mind. <laughs> How long is the drive for you? like six hours about six and a half six and a half hours and then Ugh. more if there's like multiple breaks i just broke one of the buttons on my shirt but it's all good <laughs> <laughs> we're having too much fun <laughs> hey awesome. grab grab one of the beautiful yeah. pins that you have uh stock and then just close it up there you go that's a good idea lovely it's all good. <laughs> it's one of the lower buttons it's fine but yeah i drive a lot Oof, i hate driving um, so to me it, oh, like, i've even traveled is- to go I traveled to California to go vend at an event once. That was fun. Wow. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was a K Play Fest in uh, California. Oh. It was incredible. Oh, I, I did see stuff about K Play Fest. So mm-hmm. I guess this kind of uh, goes with the next question, which is about where you've hosted events around. I mean, we knew about the Florida ones, but how mm-hmm. do the fandoms and, and crowds differ per city or per state? Since you, I would say California is probably like the the it place for k-pop fandom for the most part so are there is there a very a big difference in the crowd or not really um well in california specifically there's a huge saturation in events Mm. all over i mean yeah there might be a difference between the top half of the state and the bottom half of the state but when we went up for bts there were so many bts events happening on the same day people were event hopping going to two three four events and it's crazy there's so many people it's a lot of fun and there's so it's so nice to see people from other states that follow you they're like oh I'm here too I'm like hello I recognize your username but yeah it, there's a lot of people in California sounds like my dream event hopping <laughs> yeah I was it's just fun. gonna say <laughs> it's fun people they get in their ubers and they circle around all the different events happening 
Uh, I feel like that's going to be South Florida in a couple of years with this growth that we're, we've been so. seeing, honestly. I feel like it'll be this year. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, so. ooh, that's a lot of caffeine. You guys but, mentioned just earlier that the hardest part about hosting was like selecting vendors and having to say no and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. what is the best part about hosting for you guys? Oh my god. Everybody's reaction. Yes. yes. Oh my god, the way you that was so cute. A hundred percent. That's why we do this. You know, it's a community thing. So of course the best part's the community. It so, is, so it great. is, it is. I absolutely love seeing people's reactions as soon as they walk through that door. Yeah. Like their starstruck face to, you know, yeah. the decorations and just everything that's going on. Like just like Zero said, that's why we do these cups of events. We do it for yeah. you know, we 100%. do it for the community, we do it for the fandom, we do it for you guys, we do it for you guys at the end of the day. Now I'm right. gonna cry because I freaking <laughs> love these things. No. Oh my god. So you know the standees that we've been having recently, like the Minchan standees and the, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. OT eight one. Oh yeah, my yeah, god, yeah. I love it. So that one. when people walk in and see those, they're like Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it's my dream to take one home like one day cuz I see like you know when they host these events they like raffle them or they're like oh if you want to yes. buy it like I'm like give me the opportunity to take Go a standy it. home with me because That's I will actually take a really it. good idea. They sell for a lot of money. Like even yeah. just ordering one professionally is over $100. Yeah. And they're so expensive. our team has been making them. Oh. Our team makes them. Wow. Uh, yeah. We have one specific person, one one's here in Tampa who like I'm like, hey, here's some money. Can you make us a standee for this event? They're like, Yeah, I got you. So the yeah. Minchan ones were literally made from cardboard boxes, cut out and like paper, printed paper glued onto them. And they were falling all over the place, but they looked great in photos. <laughs> Wow. But this latest one, the OT8 one, she had all these like PVC pipes and it was detachable in three sections and we were able to transport in the car easily. It was, it's great. We're going to have that one for a very long time. I love that one. When I saw it in the yeah. like in yeah. the post, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I want it. What a dream. Yeah. We haven't had a lot of standees down here in South Florida. So mm -hmm. I, I am begging Jackie with your thinking face. Please, please, for the love of God, bring me a Changbin. <laughs> bring me a Changbin. And I also, can, I first you. dibs. First dibs to buy it when you put it up for sale or raffling, please. Can you imagine oh me with a Changbin standing in my house? Happy. It's, it's over for all you bitches. Just my like God. right in the back corner when you film. Yeah, I'm, he would be Not just right standing there, by right here. There. A hundred percent. I'll just put him on his knees right here, like be my height, and just like record all the episodes. Oh my god, my dream. Okay, sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll, I, I will try. Imagine. I will try and make it happen. I will try to get you. We have a feet. tutorial. I can get the tutorial for my volunteer and have her send it to you. Please listen, do. Listen, I am do. not a I foreigner to that. crafts. I can craft. I can. I can craft it. I just. I. I don't want to do the work actually, but I, I will do it. <laughs> yeah, I will do it. Takes it. a long time. <laughs> yeah, because I can literally imagine been at her house like I can see it oh my God. like kind of being uh, scared as like I'm walking like just all of a sudden like sensing the present and being like oh shit like, she'll I get can... a special guest she'll get a special guest in the podcast I think I'm just gonna have to end up putting like a bias wall and just have like a bunch of standees of all my biases just like covering Shrine. this wall looking at me that'll be great motivation to work and do that. things absolutely I don't think Ryan would appreciate <laughs> Yeah. You know, my boyfriend said the same thing. Chris was like, hey, you got to get the other Chris out of here. I'm like, oh my God. can we put him in the closet? You know, like, he doesn't need oh to leave. Oh, my God. <laughs> get the other Chris out of here. That's so funny. <laughs> there can only be one Chris. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, yeah, which one is it? I'm I'm not really sure. Ooh, T. <laughs> like, look, look at oh, me. Oh, <laughs> oh. This That's is funny. funny. <laughs> and I mean, I think you guys have already answered this question by the conversation, but just you know, to be extra, 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 uh, will you continue hosting Cup Steve events in the future? Oh my God, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Listen, if there's somebody that wants to do it, we'll make it happen kind of thing. You will. So it doesn't necessarily have to be me there. Like our Jacksonville hosts have a lot of stuff coming up. I'm so excited for them. 
Uh, their Instagram is Kpop and Jax, like J A X. They have a lot of fun things coming up. So if one of my hosts is like, "Hey, I want to do a Straight Kids event here. Will you help me with it?" I'm like, "Yes, absolutely. Let's do it." But for me personally, I'm focused on uh, larger events that aren't cup sleeve events because there's mm-hmm. so many cup sleeve hosts now. Yeah. And like, there's no gap anymore to fill, and I'm really happy about that. Because all these other hosts want to host them. I'm like, yes, you go for it. I can't <laughs> wait to attend your event. But I want to do some other things like a multi-stand Easter egg hunt. Or um, I can't t- Oh, I don't know. She'll oh, oh, <laughs> no, <I'm> spo- <laughs> spoil the rest. <laughs> oh, my God. That was the exclusive that we got. Wow. <laughs> We're thinking of like, you know, a multi-stand rave style night or a straight kids one with a new location which i need to tour oh still God. Imagine it's, a it's pretty cool it's really the rave. location is, is really nice yeah we're working I'm on that so right now. ready like so excited and so ready my body is literally ready <laughs> <laughs> we had a mini easter egg hunt at the anniversary event in orlando and so it got good. such great reactions we're like man let's do another like scavenger hunt style event so that's you guys that's are on so the brain. creative. You're so creative. Okay. I love it. It's, honestly, it's all the volunteers and the other hosts because they're coming to me with all these ideas. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Why not? I love that positive attitude. Yeah, it's refreshing. Yeah. It's nice. So, yes, we're definitely going to be doing a lot of events in the near future. You mm-hmm. are not going to see us stopping anytime soon. And you know, if you guys are like, you know, the viewers watching this at home, if you guys have any ideas or like anything that you guys want to see us do feel free to shoot us a dm and we'll try and make it happen we'll try to make it happen one way or another absolutely and but events are such a huge time commitment that it's just not realistic to do everything right Mm -hmm. but we're we're doing our best we are no you really are it shows seriously yeah yeah like they just said if you guys want to see more events in south florida popping up you can reach out to at SKZ in Florida. That's SKZ, like straight kids, in Florida. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I do have one thing to add. Yes, so yes, please. The reason I kind of got started making fan merch and ultimately doing events is the if they're doing it, why can't I do it, you know? Mm. Like, I can do it too. If somebody, if anybody can do it, why can't I do it? So we had just this decided exact to do it. conversation when we went to go eat Korean barbecue after that event. We had this exact conversation. I just I kept motivating you because when you showed yeah. me your artwork, I was like, I'm sorry, but you have to continue so that I can, you know, throw my money somewhere. <laughs> 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 I can spend my money I somewhere, please. It's, it's really also funny. worth mentioning then that Zero runs the account for Stray Kids in Florida, but they also have an account called 99 Limes which mm-hmm. is where they have all of the products that they create, beautiful artwork. That Stray Kids sweater crew neck that you made. Oh my God. Oh my, God. Go get one? <laughs> oh my yeah, God. That's one of my favorite creations. And honestly, they're almost sold out. The stays love them. It, they even sell in summer, which I think is strange. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Florida's such a warm state and people are like, oh my gosh, I want a jacket. I'm like, okay, they have pockets. <laughs> <laughs> i mean when I the vibe is right and the look is good like you know you it is what it is you, you have to yeah you do. Yeah, they're so comfy it's such a beautiful color story for them and everything like Thank i you. really love them they're so so mm-hmm. pretty so yeah check out 99 mm-hmm. limes underscore if you want to yeah, look I into haven't... zero's k-pop merch i haven't been too active on there recently but i'm gonna be getting back into it soon any more questions no oh wow no. that was so I... fast I know. I mean, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, it really does. We it really, really want to thank you both eight. so, so much for making time for us today and for always having nothing but smiles and great content whenever we reach out because Aww. you guys are the best. So before we go, uh, where can our listeners, viewers find you guys? Oh, man. How about first, let's start with Jackie. Where can they find you? So you guys can find me on Instagram at Jacqueline Bermudez. Feel free to reach out to me through there. I mostly do my announcements through there as well. And you can reach out th- to me on Twitter as well at Pinku Juni. So P I N Q U J O O N I E and zero. So our main social media that we use is uh, SKZ in Florida. So Stray Kids in Florida on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter. It's SKZ, like the letters. 
and yeah reach out to us mm -hmm. anywhere honestly we have our yeah. tiktok dms turned off uh instagram dm email i'm always checking my emails but yeah anywhere. like if anybody out there has any questions or like you know wants to kind of get some sort of information in regards yeah. to you know running their first ever cups of event reach out to us like you know we'll try and give you as much advice as possible so that your first mm -hmm. ever cups of event can go you know as smoothly as can be mm -hmm. well we want to thank you guys so so much again for coming today yeah. for sharing all this amazing information for holding back nothing not gatekeeping at all and really sharing information that can be useful for someone if they want to go to an event if they want to host mm -hmm. an event or if they just mm -hmm. want to watch from afar because they just don't want to leave the house that's or fine volunteer. too well, we yeah, there volunteers. you go volunteers. another yeah. opportunity also yeah, to volunteer. experience it there's Post a volunteer our... sign up form in our bios mm -hmm. awesome yeah and there Those you don't really always... have like a crazy limit with like the vendors because it's not like a table to themselves. They can just come for like a shift yeah. of a few hours or whatever. So that's another awesome opportunity to get to know you. Love yes. that. So we'll be listing your handles that you just shared with us on the description of all the places where this video podcast listening mm -hmm. experience will be available. And with that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for inviting us. Yeah, for real. I was it's, actually it's like, you know, I was actually kind of nervous with doing this. <laughs> Because, like, this is, you know, my first ever podcast that I was on. But, like, you know, the way that the conversation flowed smoothly. And I love talking to you guys. I, I really, really do. You yeah. guys are the best. Really, really do. And we're all friends here. It's not like exactly. this is anything crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, at this point, we've known each other almost for a mm -hmm. year with, I mean, a little bit more than a year with Jackie and uh, maybe, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yeah. almost there with zero. So we've known <laughs> you guys. We, we know that you put out really great work, really great products really Thank amazing events that. every single Thank time you. so we oh. knew that you were the people to contact and the experts to have oh, yeah. on this conversation so mm -hmm. so that was incredible that was amazing that was everything thank you so much to jackie and zero for just coming and being here with us and sharing all the tea they were so open both of them so open unexpectedly truly because i don't think that i would be spilling all my secrets like that if I if I was doing this, I feel like there's kind of like a competitive market within everything. Right. And we're just so thankful that they were so gracious to share all of the information that they did with us. No gatekeeping at all. At all. Really appreciate it. At all. Yeah. Thank you so much, Zero and Jackie, again, for your time, for sharing everything and for being the most gracious and for putting on some sick events all throughout South Florida for real. and really Florida in general, because they're taking over the world. Honestly. one state at a time with that i think it's a good place to close our episode thank you so much for listening this was one that was in the books for a very long time oh my god <laughs> i can't believe i told you no and then look at me can't stop talking for an hour so it's it's fun that we're we've been able to put it out so thank you so much for listening and we'll see you in the next one yes we will thank you Bye. <laughs> Bye. thank you so much for listening to this episode of the mia2k podcast we have lots of great content coming up ahead so please don't forget to follow and subscribe to our show on apple Podcasts and spotify and if you enjoyed our episodes please rate us five stars and for the real time tea follow us on instagram twitter tiktok and facebook by searching for at mia2k podcast dale bye